Hey guys, 11 o'clock at night. I just came upstairs to uh, get a drink. I'm in the kitchen. And here we are. The door is open again. This is the second time. Cold air just coming in. The other morning when I got up, it was wide open. It was like that. And then tonight, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, honestly. It's freaking me out. It's almost like I'm like, now do I need to do a tour through the house to make sure somebody isn't uh, breaking in and sleeping in one of my closets, you know? I guess the new rule is going to be make sure everybody check that these doors are locked before you go to bed. I don't care if eight people check them, but at least we'll know they're locked that way. Now, today, this morning, we were out in the woods, and the spirits did say something about tonight and uh, keeping me awake. Good morning guys, I've got paranormal on the brain and I want to take another look at reversing messages from the dead. Okay, we did a video on this a couple weeks ago. I, I took our first uh, murder case that we did and we did 10 videos on it. I took the first episode and I reversed all the messages we got and we listened to them and guess what? Pretty much every one of them gave us a new message, made sense and it kind of blew my mind. So I want to do another one of those. Maybe we'll just go to the second uh, in our series. The series was called An Unfinished Tale of Murder. And so we'll go to the second video and we'll reverse all the answers we got there and see if we get more messages and information. Before I get into that, just very briefly, I want to do a very quick spirit box session because I was talking to my aunt this morning and you guys know that what I think about synchronicities that there is no, uh, oh, it just, happened. There is a reason for everything. As you guys know, my aunt fell down the stairs three weeks ago, two, two, three weeks ago, somewhere in there, and she broke three ribs. Two days ago, Aunt Angie realized she didn't have enough Easter cards for all of the grandkids, and she needed to go to the store. And so she was supposed to get in the car with her partner and but she couldn't. She was too slow getting dressed. She said, oh, I'm going to take forever because of her sore ribs. She said, you just go without me. He went without her and he got T-boned. The car is probably a write-off. We don't know. But she said right where she would have been sitting, those two doors got, you know, full on smashed in. Can't open the doors. Um, but luckily, because she was already injured <laughs> and... Well, I, luckily or not, ask her. She's been in a lot of pain. Broken ribs are no fun, guys. Anyway, I want to talk to the spirits about that very briefly. I just want to ask about that to open up this video and see wh what do they have to say about that. Uh, I don't have my phone in this room. So, hey, they're not listening in on us having this conversation. We're just going to turn it on and I'm going to ask about Aunt Angie and what they have to say about that incident. And then we're going to look at reversing messages from the dead. Let's do it. Now I know some of you smart asses are gonna say, but you were talking to your aunt on the phone this morning when you got that story from her. Yes, I was, but not this phone. This is my old phone, and we're gonna run Necrophonic on this phone. So the phone that I spoke with her, yeah, okay, we could argue and say that it listens in on conversations. I don't think that's the case anyway, guys, but this phone was turned off completely powered off upstairs in my drone case. So, it should know nothing about that conversation that I had, other than the fact that we just said somebody's name, and I'm gonna ask about her name anyway. I'm not gonna mention what the incident was. Let's just see what... Spirits, something happened to Aunt Angie the other day that falls into our category of synchronicity. Let's talk about it.
Okay, so we're gonna change what we're doing this morning. Um, I'm getting full, full body shivers. I just got this whole message on here that needs a line of questioning to follow this. Okay, I absolutely was gonna do this reverse messages from the dead. We'll have to do this another day because sometimes when messages and things start happening, guys, you have to go with it. And I talked to you guys the other day about me receiving this message all the time. Sometimes I put it in the video, sometimes I don't because personal messages I don't put in there. And to be honest, I wonder if I'm Cracker Jacks. Honestly, I'm like, am I just hearing stuff that I want to hear? But then I was like, no, I don't want to hear this. I didn't ask to hear this. This is what the words I'm hearing. And it started out by saying, Aunt Angie, was it an angel? You know, this is what we're talking about, synchronicities. You know, did she stay home because something influenced her to stay home? That's what we're getting at. But then it goes on to say, look up, leave a message, hear them. God, Neil, listen to me, Gary. And it says my name, clear as can be, fog. Okay, that's the same as saying, Gary, wake up. It's like saying, I'm in a fog, I'm something. They keep telling me this, but I don't know what they mean. Then it says release, then it says receive, then it says gift. Okay, so now I did ask the same question again. I reworded it in a different way about Aunt Angie. I haven't analyzed it yet. I'm going to go ahead and analyze the next two sections that I did on her, and then we're going to change the plan, and we are going to ask some questions about this message right here that they're giving me. Change of plans brought on by the message they just left. Actually, I guess I should word this a little different. Something didn't happen to Aunt Angie because of a synchronicity. <laughs> Let's talk about it. She was at home. Did you spirits have anything to do with Aunt Angie not leaving the house the other day? Or the universe, I guess. In Script? What would have happened to Aunt Angie the other day if she had left the house to go get those Easter cards? Okay, there you go guys. Quite clearly, we have the spirits saying that yes, they intervened. She stayed home. I hear other words in the background that I didn't put on the screen. Something like called her and there's there's other things very faint in the background. I can't be 100%. The words on the screen are what I, I'm pretty sure I hear, you know, miracle, uh, atone, God, again. Um, it says heaven. It says there's a script, earth script forever. And then I said, what would have happened if she had gone in the car? And it said, very simple, death for her. This is crazy stuff, okay? But I want to move on from that and go back to the first message they gave where they were talking about me and a gift and that I'm supposed to receive this gift and release and that I'm in a fog and I need to wake up. Let's ask some questions about that. You keep telling me to wake up or that I'm in a fog. What do you mean? Spirits, help me.
How do I wake up? Can the universe guide me? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do with these videos and these messages and the spirit apps? Just in case you're not aware, I don't remember anything before coming to Earth. So, you guys have told me before, I'm on a mission. I don't know what that is. I need clarification. To be very clear and precise, I want you to say my name so that I know you're talking directly to me right now. I didn't hear my name. They say it all the time, but when I ask them for it, I don't get it. I don't want to play around with cryptic, hidden messages anymore. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, tell me. More photography, more relaxation, more adventure. Is that what I'm getting out of this? I'm just taking this too seriously. This is an adventure. This is a vacation. Earth is just uh, a place to relax and get away from it all. Verify, please. clearly said yes. Why don't you tell me when and how I'm going to die? How old am I going to be? I think it just said 80 and old. Guys, I had a dream before where my buddy Jim, my dead friend Jim, he left me a message and I'm getting a shiver down my neck for Grant and I. And it was the strangest message, okay? But it, it made sense because Jim would have talked like this. He sometimes said things that were funny but weird. And in the dream, I was walking in this beautiful garden and Jim told me that he had a message for Grant and I and that we, we needed to start cultivating and growing our gardens so that they may be as big as our bellies at the time of our passing. And I woke up and I was actually, I woke up crying because I was having this meeting with my friend who I knew was dead. It was a very livid dream. I knew he was gone, but we were in this beautiful place and he had messages for me. And that was the one I wrote it down, you know, that cultivate my garden. What he meant by that was expand my human experience, my friendships, my interactions with other people and that my garden should be as big as my belly at the time of my passing. Yeah, crazy stuff. Okay, we're going to leave it on that message right there, guys, on that note. Um, I got a lot of stuff I need to analyze. You guys will have just seen it, but I have work to do. I'll catch you in the next adventure. This is crazy. I don't know what to do. It's... I wish they would just tell me.